Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell EMC PowerEdge R740 XD server memory upgrades and how to properly install and configure the system. Links for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Dell EMC 740XD. Um, first things first, this is the next gen to the R730XD. Uh, the real big difference is uh, it takes a little bit faster RAM and you're uh, increasing your procs from the, uh, the old um, E5 2600 V3 V4 series, and now you're able to actually use uh, Intel scalable uh, Gen 1, Gen 2 CPUs, which is pretty cool. So on that note, there are um, a couple of different chassis bays. Uh, you have, as you see in here right uh, now, the 12 bay large form factor, which is really actually uh, 18 bays, because uh, for this specific model, uh, there's four flexes right here, and there's actually two in the back, uh, all of them being large form factor, which is pretty awesome to have uh, 18 um, 3.5 inch drives being able to put into a 2 point or a 2U chassis. It's uh, something personally I've never seen, uh, so I thought that was a pretty uh, a pretty sweet engineering feature that Dell came up with um, on this chassis. Uh, if you're using 2.5 inch, there's a 24 bay chassis uh, that you could load, uh, load small form factor in with. Okay, uh, as we noted, it takes uh, Intel. Uh, second gen scalable procs, so you're going to be able to use things like um, your silver 4100 series, your uh, gold 5100, 6100 series, uh, your platinum 8100 series, um, and as we said, there's two CPUs. The socket is an LGA 3647. Um, and as far as the RAM is concerned, there's uh, 24 DIMM slots. Uh, it uses DDR4 memory. Um, you can use a number of different speeds. You can go as low as 2133. Uh, you can use 2400, 2666. Uh, you can use 2933. Uh, and you can go all the way up to 3200. Now, with the 3200, uh, it'll actually clock down to 2933. Uh, it'll physically work, but uh, you know, just wanted to note that in case you were trying to uh, get that high. Um, there's a couple different types of RAM you can use. Technically, there's three types of RAM. But let's start with the main two. Uh, that's ECC registered, also known as RDIM, and there's load reduce, also known as LRDIM. With uh, ECC registered, you can max out at 1.5 terabytes, and that's going to be using 24. 32 gigs, and you can go all the way up to 3200 megahertz. However, with LRDIMs, you can actually get twice the capacity, and you can use three terabytes using 24 128 gigabyte modules, and again at the 3200 megahertz. Uh, now, here's the the real kicker, uh, which some of you might be here for, is you can actually get a total of 7.64 terabytes of memory capacity in the R740XD, which I know is crazy. Uh, how do you get 7.64 terabytes of memory? That sounds like storage more than it does like memory, uh, which is uh, pretty awesome. And that's a new type of module that's out, and that's the uh, Intel Optane um, uh, modules. And Intel Optane is a little bit different, so their modules actually start the low end, believe it or not, is a 128 gig, and then there's a 256, and then you can go all the way up to a 512 uh, gigabyte, and that's just for one module, which is crazy because if you go back a few gens, 512 was like a whole server. Now it's in a module, which is pretty cool. So now, if you're using Intel Optane, what's the max that you can can actually do? And that's a great question. So it is 7.68, and that's 12 uh, 512 gigabytes from Intel Optane, and then mixing that with 12 128 gigabytes on the load reduce. I also would like to note for Intel Optane, the speeds are a little bit lower. It's 2133, 2400, and 2666. Uh, you can't go all the way up to 3200. Um, now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, bust it open, and we'll show you a little bit more about the insides, uh, the channels, and how you would actually load, uh, let's say, if you were using Intel Optane, because you have to evenly distribute them across the white slots. Um, but before we do, first thing I always recommend, whenever you're inside any system, whether it's a server or desktop at your home, uh, personally, I think you should have ESD gear. You just don't want to shock the machine, especially, especially an expensive one like this. So I'm going to grab my ESD gear, and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine. So first things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Pop it open and remove the top, pretty much like any server you've uh, ever been in. <laughs> All right, now that you're in, uh, we had kind of talked about the storage capabilities of this machine, and I don't want to talk too much about that since this is more of a RAM video, but um, you can see here are four additional spaces 
uh, for hard drives, all of them being 3.5 inch, not 2.5 inch, which is pretty cool. And then there's also two more spaces back here, uh, which again, it's just, I, I guess I'm fascinated by it, but 18 uh, large form factor drives in a 2U, I just, I've, I've never seen that. So um, anyhow, now that you uh, were here, let's talk about how to actually get to the module. So uh, this, um, feature that I like with the four extra drives, uh, this riser here is actually kind of blocking you. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to lift this up and you're going to lift this up over here. Okay. And once this is up, you're going to kind of lift it straight up. Now, before I do want to note, um, you can do this two different ways. Um, some people want to uh, disassemble all of it and I get that that's cool um, right now I'm doing a video so I'm trying to do it a little bit faster um, but you can you can take all these um, cables out what I'm actually going to do uh, is I'm just going to pull it out and then I'm going to click these down and then I'm just going to flip it like this and it's not you know always ideal to do it that way I wouldn't recommend it but for sakes of just what we're doing right now, just an easy way to kind of put it to the back, okay? Now, to fully access the modules, uh, unfortunately, the um, the 640, one of the things that I like about it is you don't really need to remove the fan modules, um, and, and technically you don't have to. I mean, you can fully access all the tabs back here, but if you're doing all 24 like I'm about to do, it makes it just a heck of a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is uh, remove the fan modules. And it's very simple, just these two, blue tab, you're just going to pull them up and you're going to lift this straight up. Okay. And now I'm just going to actually toss this to the side and I'll put it back in at the end. And uh, now you can see what I'm talking about, that there's just so much extra space in the back once the modules are there. So uh, if you're doing like say replacing one module, really you don't need to do it. Uh, but if you're going to be upgrading all 24, it does make your, your life a little bit easier. And that's what we're here for today, right? Okay. Now that we're in, let's uh, talk a little bit more about the, uh, the modules. So um, there are uh, 12 dim slots that are controlled by CPU one and there are 12 dim slots that are controlled by CPU2 for a total of 24 dim slots. Um, you can actually notice by the color code that there are two dims per channel, uh, which is important information because whenever you're loading it, let's just say you were running this machine with one CPU, which we'd have to put in CPU1, but let's say you were running with one CPU and you were putting in, let's just say, six modules. You would want to put those in the start of each channel, which would be the white dim slots. And the nice thing about this is Dell's actually labeled it on top of color coding it. So if you look, and you can't see it on the video, but in between the dim slots, it even says this is A1, this is A2, this is A3, and then you come to the uh, this side over here, and you're gonna see A4, A5, A6. So if you had one CPU, the proper way to install your modules or to configure them would be in these six white dim slots and you want to skip the back of the channel, which is the black dim slot, okay? So that's the best way to do it. Now, if you were running two CPUs and you were running 12 modules, again, the best way to do it is all of the white dim slots and, and Dell has labeled them. So this is B1, B2, B3, and you come over here and you're gonna find B4, B5, B6. So it's, it's really simple if you know what you're doing um, and, and you're literally it's just kind of like a map for a lack of better term. You're just kind of putting it in the proper place and people ask well why do we do that? Why don't we just put you know let's just say six dims all on this side? Well it's, it's about balancing um, the load management for your modules and if you put them across the memory channels you're basically maximizing each channel uh, you don't want one channel to be overloaded and another channel have nothing going on um, so the best thing that you can do is to, to spread them out evenly so it's just about um, you know proper management is all so now of course if you were loading them all up like we are about to do it really doesn't matter we're just putting them in all 24 um, so if I wanted to start right here, for instance, it doesn't matter because they're all going to be filled up, but I do actually recommend, I like to start um, when I'm loading modules and I am maxing out a machine, um, I want to put them uh, kind of in some of the harder to get spaces and work my way towards the middle just because it sometimes might be a little tight right here or a little tight right here, but in the middle it's a little bit easier to get to, so just simple things to make your life easier. So, all right, I'm going to actually go ahead and load this up. Before I do one of the things I like to do, uh, push all the tabs open. Last thing you want is to be uh, fumbling around with RAM and trying to put it in and the tabs are kind of blocking you. So I just push them all open 
and make it just a little bit easier for me so when I am installing them I don't have any issues. Um, and another thing I like to note uh, before we get really going here, uh, every module has uh, this notch right here on the in the middle of the leads and this notch is called a key. Now this key is very important because uh, this key prevents users from one putting in the wrong module so for instance you couldn't put in a DDR3 or a DDR2 module but it's also important because there's a notch right here on the uh, dim slot itself so if I were to try to put it in uh, the wrong way it, it actually even looks so it's just it's just off just I mean like half an inch so I actually need to flip it around and make sure I put it in properly um, Simple things like this, because if you did put it the wrong way, one, you could damage the dim slot, which could potentially damage the mother motherboard. You might have to replace the motherboard or damage the dim, and you have to replace the dim, neither of which you want. So it's just simple things to make your life easier. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing them. Um, and like Again, like I was talking about, I like to start on the edges, uh, just make it easier for you. Um, and one thing I'd like to note is right now, you see I've let my hands go, the module's in there, but it's really not in there. So a common error that we hear from uh, some of our customers is that they think the module um, is broken or is bad, and really it's just not seated. So listen for this click right here. You hear that click? The module is now fully seated. So just simple things like that that uh, c people could run into errors on, um, and it's it's nobody's uh, fault. I mean, it's just that happens to everybody. Whether you're an expert or a novice, it's just a, a very simple, normal mistake that happens uh, all the time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start loading these up and uh, get everything completely filled up for one of our local customers. And voila, just like that, you can get 24 modules in, uh, you know, relative easily. Uh, I mean, it took me probably in real time three to five minutes to knock that out. I know it was fast forward in, in a few seconds for you guys, but uh, it, it's really an easy process. Um, even if you're not um, a true computer technician, which I'm sure anyone doing this uh, is probably going to be a, a pretty awesome data center technician, but even someone could do this that didn't you know, fully know what they're doing because it's not that hard to put modules in. So uh, on that note, we're going to put it all back together. So uh, first things first, we're going to uh, put the fan modules back in. So uh, this I will note, has a little slot right here. You're just going to want to line it up with these rivets. Uh, nothing too hard, but you just want to make sure you get it on properly. And you're going to push the blue tabs back down. And you hear it click. Uh, this we're going to open back up and flip back over. Do it gently, of course. And this is just going to slide perfectly in real snug with the... Um, the fans here. Okay, so just going to drop this right in. And then you're going to hear, I also want to note, this clicks in. It's kind of a loud click, but <laughs> clicks in. Um, and that's going to let you know it's fully in. So after that, just put on the top and you're done. So I uh, wanted to thank you guys for stopping by. If you made it this far in the video, do us a favor and smash that subscribe button down below. If you need any memory upgrades for your R740 XD, uh, please do us a favor and reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.